Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Intentional Living Bible Study. I am your um, host and instructor for tonight, the Reverend Dr. Dawn Tyler. I am so happy to see you all tonight. Listen, I know the last two weeks I haven't been here live and direct. You've been watching some replays, but it's a new season. It's a new day. No, I'm just kidding. I'm back. I'm live. I'm here. I'm in person. It is April 15th. 2024. So if you don't mind, you can, uh, if you don't mind hitting it, hitting the share button on your, um, on your screen and share this um, Bible study with someone else. Cause we have this saying that when you help us share the Bible studies, you are helping to share the gospel. So I'm sharing it on my page now. Please share it on your personal pages. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation about the fruit of the spirit, right? Um, so I am so happy to be back and live. Let me tell you, I wasn't just not here for no reason. I've been doing some really exciting uh, ministry work for the New Hope uh, Missionary Baptist Church. And... Um, I'll let Pastor share all those things when, you know, he's ready to share, but we're doing some great things and meeting a lot of needs in the community. So the last two weeks I was getting ready for a lot of that stuff. So I wasn't just sitting around, not, you know, paying you guys any attention. I was busy, busy doing ministry work, um, which I know is going to benefit a lot of people. And when you all finally hear about it, you're going to be very excited as well. Okay. So trust me. So we are live tonight. April 15th, 2024, live from Inglewood, New Jersey. That's where I live. <laughs> and ready to continue this conversation about the fruit of the spirit. And of course, the name of this course is Bearing Good Fruit, Growing in Christian Character. And everything we've been talking about the past few months since the beginning of the year, we were talking about how to conduct ourselves as believers in Jesus Christ. And listen, that's what intentional Bible study, intentional living Bible study is all about. It's about learning those practices, those habits, those concepts that we need as believers to live intentionally for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? So the basis for our classes come from, um, all these sessions come from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 24, and um, and we're going to read that from the New International Version of the Bible. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. So all those and this scripture basically say those of us who call on the name of Jesus, say that we are Christians, we are believers, that we have gotten rid of the desire to do what we want to do, but instead we want to live by the fruit of the spirit and behave and conduct ourselves in the manner that's here. Now, let me tell you, that is very hard to do. That's why we have these sessions, right? It's not easy because our natural inclination is to do what we want to do. And so it takes practice, a lot of conversation, a lot of reflection in order for us to get better at, right? Demonstrating these Quality. So we've talked about love. We talked about joy. We talked about peace, forbearance, kindness, and goodness. We've talked about all of those things, right? And so tonight we're going to talk about faithfulness. We're going to talk about faithfulness. So if you don't mind, let's put that in the chat, the word faithfulness. I always believe in doing that. Because I think when you are actively engaging in this conversation, that it's going to help you remember, right? Or recall these concepts later on and therefore apply them to your life. So you got a second type faithfulness in the chat. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. We're going to be talking about faithfulness. So while you're doing that, I want to ask you a quick question. Have you ever taking on a project or responsibility that seemed too massive and how did it make you feel have you ever taken on a project or responsibility that was really big and if you did how did you feel about it so i 
uh, I think for me, um, around 2010 or 2011 was the first grant that I ever wrote, right? And it was for um, school district where I work. And it was a $6 million grant and the district was awarded $2 million a year. So that was a really big project and a very big responsibility that I had. I mean, when I wrote that grant, which was the very first grant I wrote, I was in, I was sitting at the table with people I never thought I would be sitting at the table with, like the uh, superintendent, the assistant superintendent, the business administrator. I was sitting with supervisors, all these people that I kind of like knew their names on paper, board members that I never, ever thought that I would be sitting at the table and they're like, Dawn, what do you think? Right? So have you ever taken on some kind of project or responsibility that was really big? And how did you feel about it? So I told you what I did, how I felt about it. I was nervous at times, but there's something I was, well, nervous most of the times, but I felt excited also because it was new and it was exciting and it was a new venture. So what about you? Have you ever taken on a responsibility that seemed really big? Type yes or no in the chat. Have you ever taken on something that was really massive? And if you care to share, how did that make you feel? Okay. Now, next question. Have you ever needed or asked for support? Have you ever been in a situation when you're like, listen, I need some help? Um, maybe a couple of months ago, um, my boss wanted me to make um, this chart that showed the courses that I established for different programs that without getting into all of that um, education talk. She wanted me to make a visual chart. Well, designing a chart was not is not something I'm really good at. So I had to raise my hand and say, listen, I can tell you what it is, but to design it with boxes and lines and all of that, to make it a graphic, I'm not good at that. Have you ever asked anybody for help? Yes or no? Simple yes or no. Have you ever asked anyone for help? Okay. So tonight, um, subject is really about a promise of support a promise of support and you see the cross there so who you think gave us a promise of support that's what we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about faithfulness and in talking about faithfulness we're going to be talking about the faithfulness of god okay and, and my hope is that if someone is watching this tonight and they are going through some things they will understand that the lord promises and his promises he keeps because he is faithful. So to talk about faithfulness and the faithfulness of God tonight, we're going to be reading from Joshua chapter one, verses one through nine is jo Joshua chapter one, verses one through nine. And I'm going to make this big and I'm going to fade the black. Now I think I'm going to peek in the corner. There you go. I'm going to peek in the corner and I'm going to play. Um, I'm going to read the scripture to you. Okay. So after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses, my servant is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan river into the land. I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as promised, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert in Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you would lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. 
Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Med meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The word of God is already blessed. So we're here and we're in Joshua chapter 1. And this is immediately after Moses passes away, right? And we know from our, uh, we know that Moses was leading the Israelites into the promised land. And the promised land is called the land of Canaan. And he was moving them into this land that the Lord promised um, promised them as the, he took them out of slavery in Egypt. Now, if we really want to go back and talk about the promise um, the Lord promised Abraham, which the Israelites are all right descendants of Abraham. So this promise goes way far back, right? And so now the Lord is being faithful and delivering on His promise that that now He has appointed Joshua to finish this journey to bring the people of Israel into the Promised Land, right? So Joshua is leading all of these people. And so we go back to the question that I asked you in the beginning. Have you ever taken on a project or some type of responsibility that was massive? Let's think about Joshua for a second. Joshua is now taken over for his mentor. He was Moses's aide, as the scripture told us. He was Moses's right hand. And now his right hand, it has passed. I mean, his, his mentor has passed away and now he's been given the mantle to do what his predecessor was given by God to do. So think about if you're, you're Joshua, right? You're mourning the loss of your teacher, your leader, the one that you've been following all of this time. And now you have to lead all the people that he was leading that has now been given to you to finish. Does that make any sense? How do you think Joshua felt, right? So we can kind of infer that Joshua may not have felt confident, right? Because then the Lord begins to share with him, listen, be strong, be courageous, because I'm going to go with you wherever you go. And that speaks to the faithfulness of God, that no matter what situation we put, we're put in, no matter how big and massive or large the task or the responsibility may be, he's going to be with you all the time. And because he's faithful, he's going to be there. It's not um, a case where he might be you know, he, maybe he'll be there. You know, like, Hey, you have a, a friend and they'll be like, Oh, I got your back. I'll be there. And then when it goes down, that person isn't there, then that's not God at all. Right. God has the capacity to be there for each and every one of us at the same time. So now Moses, I mean, Joshua has to lead all of these people into the promised land and to Canaan. Right. But before they get there, they have to cross the Jordan River. And the Jordan River is, um, you know, full to capacity, is overflowed on, on every side. And they have to go through the Jordan in order to get to the promised land. And so you know what the Lord did? Well, let me ask you this question. What did the Lord do for the Israelites when they were coming through the Red Sea, fleeing persecution and, and slavery in Egypt? You know what he did? He parted the Red Sea so that they could walk through to freedom. So now here they go. Years later, Moses is gone. The only thing that separates them from Canaan is the Jordan River. And you know what the Lord did? He was faithful again. He opened the Jordan River so that they could go through to get to the land that he promised. Is this making sense? Because y'all a little quiet in the chat tonight. Tell me if it makes sense. Let me know in the chat if that makes sense. So he is still faithful from Abraham to Moses and to now to Joshua. He is keeping his promise to all the people in Israel that he's faithful. He didn't forget. 
Now, remember, on the way here, the Israelites did all kind of crazy stuff, right? They doubted. They, they talked about Moses. They started worshiping idols, all kinds of crazy things. They didn't listen. They were hard-headed. They even tried to um, plan an uprising, Korah, against Moses, right? But the Lord was still faithful. He still was bringing them to the promised land, right? And that's the message. When we talk about faithfulness as a fruit of the spirit, we know that the Lord is faithful. So when it comes to Christian character, each of us are expected to be faithful as well. We're expected to be faithful to God. We're expected to be faithful to those that we are in close relationship with. We are to be faithful to our commitments, right? If we say we're going to do something, we need to do it. We are expected to do what we say we're going to do. Does that make sense? And so we know that the Lord is faithful. He's there with us all the time. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse three says, but the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. So regardless of all the things that you're facing, when you, you know, people, you know, doing things, all kinds of manners of things against you that are wrong and that are bad and that are just downright evil. This scripture reminds us that even though those things are going to happen, the Lord is faithful and they're not going to win. Do you hear that? Like, do you, do you understand what this scripture is saying? Like he's faithful. He's going to give you strength and protect you. Now it's hard a lot of times because we feel like the person who's doing or the, 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 the situation is getting the best of us. Sometimes you may feel like you're losing, but you're never losing. You're not losing because the scripture tells us that because the Lord is faithful, he's going to strengthen you and protect you from those evils. Yeah, they might get some lick in, right? You know, uh, you know how uh, you ever seen a fight and sometimes someone is in the middle trying to keep the person from hitting the other person and they may get hit once or twice. Yeah, you might get they might get some licks in. They might they might be able to touch you. They may be able to crush you a moment here or there, right? But guess what? Even though those licks get to you, they're not going to win. They don't win. Yes, you get frustrated, but he's going to give you the strength and protect you from that evil. And sometimes what we think is evil, what we believe is evil, and we lose out on something, is really the Lord's protection and keeping things away from you. So if we trust in the faithfulness of God, no matter what people do or say or whatever situation they put you in, you got to know that the Lord is faithful, that it's going to come out and turn out to your good, right? Psalms 119, verse 90. When we're talking about God, your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. So God's faithfulness is not just for you. It's for you and all your offsprings. It's for you and all your generations to come. We know that. We see that in the scripture. The, the Lord was faithful to Abraham and, and then faithful to all his descendants. He, he was faithful to Moses and then turned around and demonstrated the same faithfulness to Joshua. And he's going to be faithfulness, faithful to it continues through all generations. Listen, there are some people, there are people who, who are going to be in the line of your family that are going to be blessed by the faithfulness of God that you will never, ever meet nor see. When I think about it, I got some great, 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 great grandchildren who are going to know the faithfulness of God that I'm never going to see. But I do know his faithfulness endures all those generations, generations that I can't even fathom. When I go back, I've been on Ancestry.com and I look at my family tree and I look at how God has in, 
has endured and has been faithful to my family as far back as I can go. The 1730 something, I believe we went at that far. He's had his hands on us. And so his faithfulness will continue. It's not a one shot deal. It's not a one and done. It's not a one hit wonder. It continues from generations. He established the earth. So if the Lord established the earth, his faithfulness endures all of that. Does that make sense? Somebody needs to let me know in the chat if that makes sense. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse nine. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandment. You hear that? He keeps the promise. He promises. He's faithful. He is so faithful that he keeps his promise, a covenant, an agreement to love us to a thousand generations. Those who love him and keep his commandments, he's faithful to them. He's faithful to us. Does that make sense? For a thousand to two, a thousand generation of those who love him. He's been faithful before our time. He's faithful right now and he'll be faithful tomorrow. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, to today and forever. Isn't that some faithfulness? Lamentations chapter three, verses 22 to 23. Because the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is so faithful that he gives us fresh mercy fresh compassion every single day, every morning, every day we get up. He's faithful enough to give us new mercy every single time we wake up. Every time we wake up, he does not give us what we deserve. We done told people off. We done cussed people out. We done manipulated. We, we've watched stuff we shouldn't have watched. We said things we shouldn't have said. We were mean to someone. We we told off the girl in the, in the grocery store. We were mean to the waiter. All of that stuff we do that we shouldn't do. And every morning he gives us another chance to fix it. Every morning, he gives us another chance to repent for the stuff that we've done. Every single morning, he says, you know what? I know that the wages of sin is death. He knows that every day we deserve to not be here. But because of his great love and his faithfulness, he gives us a fresh chance every single day. A chance we don't even deserve. I know you, some of you might say, well, you know, I don't really do anything that bad. You do something. Because if you don't do anything bad, I can tell you what you're doing bad now. You're lying. Because <laughs> we all sin and fall short. Every single morning. That's how faithful God is. How faithful are you? Are you that faithful that you do stuff all the time? You do it right every single time? Nah, you don't. But you and I should strive to be as faithful as possible to our commitments, uh, well, first to God, to, to those who are closest to us, to our commitments, faithful to the responsibilities that we've been given. Because we have the greatest model of faithfulness. It's Jesus himself. The Lord came down to the earth, showed his faithfulness by giving his life and giving his body as a living sacrifice so that we can get those new mercies every day. That even though the wages of sin is death, the gift that we got from God is eternal life. Somebody ought to say amen. And so listen to this. If we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins 
and purify us of all unrighteousness. He is so faithful that if we say, Lord, I repent, help me to not do this anymore. I am so sorry, like weeping sorry for what I've done. I'm so sorry for living a life that is so contrary to what you have taught. I want you to, to love me and love my generations to come. Like, I want you, I want your love to endure. I want to listen to you. I want to, I want to be the person you called me to be. And you're so faithful that you would forgive me and clean me of my unrighteousness. And he's faithful to forgive us. And so the question is, are we faithful to forgive others? Are we unmerciful servants? That's another Bible study for another day, right? So we're going to end tonight. I'm going to ask you all to reflect. One, spend some time praising God for his love, for his faithfulness, and his support in your life. And then I want you to think of a friend who needs your support and ask God how you can show support to those friends ask god to show you how you can be more faithful with your commitments how you can be more faithful with your responsibilities ask him to show you what faithfulness looks like in your work let us pray lord we thank you for this day we thank you for your faithfulness that you've shown each and every one of us. God, we thank you that you give us another chance. And Lord, if you give us another chance to wake up tomorrow morning, we are going to remember your faithfulness to us to show us new mercies every single day. God, we pray that you help us, that you show us, you open your eyes to open our eyes to show us all the areas in our lives that we're not faithful. And God, we then ask you to help us to be faithful in our commitments, in our responsibilities, in our relationships with other, in all the things that you've given us, faithful with the resources and the money that you have given us so that we can be good stewards of the time and everything that you've done for us. Lord, I pray that you bless every single person who's watching this and who will watch this broadcast later, that you will bless their families from generations as you promised in your word. Thank you, God, for being there for us. Thank you for keeping us and blessing us. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, everybody. And one, a couple of things. This Saturday at 9 o'clock a.m. at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, the men's ministry will have a breakfast. This is free of charge. There's no cover charge. You don't got to pay for anything. I know the cook, and I know the cook is about to get it in he is gonna get it in i didn't ask permission to say his name so i'm not gonna say it but i promise you i've eaten his cooking before and i'm a woman so i can't eat but i can live through some of the brothers who can go and eat on sunday on saturday morning at nine o'clock a.m so please be there for the breakfast and then ladies women's day is coming get your white get your silver Let's let's uh, celebrate the Lord in um, beautiful fashion, looking all alike. And Pastor Lindsay Upshaw is our guest preacher for that day. She is the daughter of um, our uh, co-chair of deacons, Deacon Kim Green. You're not going to want to miss it. And it's still time for you to join the Women's Day Choir. Thank you all. And the last thing, I'm sorry, Vacation Bible School, scan that QR code. We're going back to two weeks of Sunday Vacation Bible School during the day like we used to do it back in the day. Let's teach our children about the Lord, his mercy, his faithfulness, all of those good things that we sit on here and learn about. Let's teach them so that they can be the people that God called them to be. Good night, everyone. And I'll see you all later. And I will be live, God willing, next week. Have a good one.